Doctors of Reddit, what was your dumbest r slash I am very smart patient experience? RN here. I see some crazy stuff, but one thing that stands out was the time I was admitting a guy to the hospital. I can't really remember what for, but he was about 400 pounds, diabetic, heart disease, you name it. Anyhow, I'm at the computer going over some admission questions with him and his 10 family members who are crowded in the room with him. A few minutes in, he starts complaining that he's thirsty. He needs something to drink right now. So I get on my phone and call the nurse assistant and ask her to bring in some ice water. As soon as the words are out of my mouth, the whole family screams, No! No water! He's allergic to water! Well, this is going to be a problem. Turns out the guy had been drinking nothing but Sprite and sweet tea for years because of his water allergy. The next question the wife had was, where are we all supposed to sleep? The whole family, 10 people, were planning to stay at the hospital with him. You can't make this stuff up. Was working at a clinic. I was speaking with a non-controlled diabetic patient about her sugar intake, and she says she drinks a 32-ounce soda every day. I ask her if it's regular or diet, and she replies with, it's half regular. I let the ice melt first so there isn't as much sugar in it. Sorry, but that isn't how it works. I had a patient who was a completely non-compliant diabetic, smoker, morbidly obese, who had his first heart attack at 45. His blood pressure was also super high. And instead of taking his anti-hypertensive medications, he went to the gym. In the gym, he would sit in the sauna for a very long time, and sweat a lot, and lower his blood pressure by becoming dehydrated. Amazing. I bet he wouldn't listen to a dang thing you said either, because it did technically lower his blood pressure. I have one. I got this from my friend, who is a doctor on the children's ward in a rural hospital. These parents bring in their child whose hair is infested with lice. The lice was visible to the naked eye and could be seen crawling on the child's clothing. While the medical staff examined the child in order to determine a course of action, they discovered the child was covered in a white powder and smelled heavily of chemicals. They asked the parents what were the substances and the smells emanating from the child. The parents said, quite matter of fact, it was seven powder and the flea and tick spray they used on their dogs on the family's farm. Needless to say, social workers were notified about this case. 70-year-old female tripped and fell two days ago. She came in with hip pain, but reports after the fall her nose was bleeding. She had landed on her nose. About a year prior, her dentist had messed up an infraorbital nerve block and caused some swelling in that region, but that was all resolved. This old lady is now convinced her nosebleed after falling on her face is related to an infection from the dental issue a year ago. After multiple back and forth on the etiology of the nosebleed, she became the first patient I raised my voice and put down an authoritative, no, you are wrong, just stop it. This has got to be the medical equivalent to, the update you installed on the computer a year ago is making it run funny, get over here and fix it. I work for an optometrist and it was the month before school started and a woman brought in her son to have his eyes checked for the first time. Seems like a reasonable thing for any parent, even he was a little older than usual for a first eye exam. Better late than never, I guess. The mom was well-spoken and appeared fairly intelligent. Everything went as normal, the doctor examined the boy, and ended up prescribing glasses. When the doctor was explaining to the mom that her son had to wear his glasses all the time since he's nearsighted and basically can't see clearly past five feet in front of him, and will definitely need glasses for school. For some reason, this caused a switch to flip in the mom, and she spazzed out on the doctor, saying that her son doesn't need glasses, and that the doctor is only saying that he does because he wants to sell glasses. She says that she only brought her son in because there was some form for school that needed to be filled out, and that doctors are all con artists trying to push unnecessary medications and interventions. The doctor tried to calm her down and explain that he's only trying to help them, but that she was free to get a second opinion and gave her a copy of the kid's prescription and sent them on their way. About four months later, the lady is back asking for another copy of her son's prescription. Apparently, the first semester midterm results were in, and her son failed them all, because he couldn't see the board in his classes and needs glasses. Any variation of this, which I get all the freaking time. Me. So how are things going with your diabetes? I don't have diabetes. Then why are you taking metformin and Victoza and whatever? I used to have diabetes. Then replace diabetes with hypertension slash anti-hypertensives, etc. Or when I ask them what medical diagnosis they have, and they say none while taking a ton of meds. Or when they misname a funny part. Prostrate, tendant, neuterus, to name a few. Do you take any medications? No. Are you supposed to take any medications? Yes. What for, and do you know what they are? No. Do you think this chest pain could be because of the heart attack I had a few years ago? Well, gee, mister, it sure probably could be! 
not a doctor, but I'm a nurse who worked in the OR at a trauma center, was doing surgery on a 19-year-old who tested positive for meth and cocaine, who was grilling the anesthesiologist about every drug we were going to use in surgery because he didn't like putting chemicals in his body. Gotta stick with that organic, fair trade, non-GMO cocaine. Most of my own stories go along similar lines to patient has chest pain driving a coach load of school children, thinks it's indigestion, swigs bottle of Gaviscon, later diagnosed with a huge heart attack. My favorite ever story comes from a colleague. A patient comes into A&E with abdominal pain. As part of the workup, he gets an abdominal x-ray which shows the problem as clear as day. The colleague has then proceeded to remove, from the patient's rectum, an 8-inch replica of Nelson's Column, the statue in the center of Trafalgar Square, London. On showing it to the patient, the response was, Oh, that's Nelson. He lives up there. He lives up there? You're just walking around with that in your butt 24-7? I've got two stories that stick out in my mind. The first is the mother of a toddler who came into emergency. The kid had cruddy green slash bloody stuff coming out of his left nostril and a lot of redness and swelling of only the left side of his nose and the adjacent cheek. Mom was sure he caught a sinus infection and just wanted some antibiotics. Now, I know some kids like shoving whatever will fit into their body orifices, and that this was more than likely given the one-sided nature of his condition, but mom was insistent that he never puts things in his nose. It took some convincing, but I finally got her to let me take a look, gave a squirt of midazolam and the good nostril to settle him, then dug with some tweezers through the crud until I pulled out a big ol' button battery. It would have been burning his nose for a couple days. Hopefully he healed up well. Side note. If a kid swallows a button battery, it can do a similar thing to their esophagus. This is an emergency and needs to be dealt with ASAP. I actually sneezed after reading that. Patient had a hard time getting pregnant. Finally conceived but miscarried. Patient has a DNC so she can try again, this time with medical intervention. We monitor her blood to ensure the pregnancy hormone is gone before beginning treatment. But she keeps coming back with high levels of hormone. Docs are worried because she might have some retained placenta or pituitary disorder, and this could be super bad for future fertility. We call her in for a conversation about the hormone levels not going away. After talking together for what might be wrong, they are going to go home and think about further tests. She says, I need to go. I have an appointment at the weight loss center for an HCG shot. Turns out that she is on the HCG diet. HCG is the pregnancy hormone. And this was after an hour of the doc saying, we don't know why you had these constant high levels of HCG in your blood and we are worried. Patient inquiring about birth control was adamant she wanted an IED. Take cover! It's a boy! Had a young woman with recurring UTIs that began after a recent partner and with no STDs. Went through the standard questions trying to figure out what could be causing them and eventually found out she had been lubricating with jelly. Not KY jelly. The mix-up had literally been a joke on house. It took me some effort to keep a straight face, but we eventually resolved the problem and she stopped getting UTIs. Oh, I have two good ones that come to mind. Clinical pharmacist here, by the way, with one story in the ER and one in the pharmacy. ER physician told me this one. 16-year-old boy presented to the ER with an extremely swollen, discolored woohoo! Apparently, he had been using his mom's insulin needles to draw blood out of his arm and inject it into his own woohoo! He thought that adding blood would help increase his size. His woohoo! was terribly infected and he was hospitalized for a week or so. One day in the pharmacy, a girl comes to the counter requesting a refill for her birth control. We pulled up her profile and realized we couldn't refill it because she just got a 28-day fill less than two weeks ago. When we asked what happened to the other one, she said she was out. Apparently, both her and her boyfriend were each taking a pill each and was adamant that was how they needed to prevent pregnancy. I can't fault her for being proactive, but I will say that she's doing too much. <laughs> I'm a Corisman, not a doctor, but I once had a patient tell me that there was no credible research that smoking was bad for one's health. Okay. Optician here. We had a patient who refused to let us use the tonometer, a machine for checking ocular internal pressure to diagnose glaucoma. He said that puff machine gives you glaucoma and we weren't going to pull that on him. He told us his father got an exam and had glaucoma after using that machine. His uncle and brother also had no signs of glaucoma, and after getting the puff test, both people had been diagnosed with a disease. Glaucoma doesn't have any outward symptoms before you start going blind. This idiot just told me he has a very strong familial disposition to glaucoma and refused to be tested for it. Also, puff isn't that bad, guys. Try contacts. Your eyes stop fighting back pretty quick. The puff is a lot better than the old machine. It just hit you on the eyeball with a little ball and a lever. I also have plenty of patients that don't understand family history. 
I interview patients directly, so we don't have any real paperwork, and too many people can't answer simple questions. Do you or any of your direct family members have diabetes? Yes. Yourself or your family? Alternatively, if yes to family members, they start listing their spouse's family or stepchildren, not how genetic disposition works. Or after getting no answers to diabetes, hypertension, glaucoma, thyroid problem, heart problems, etc., I ask if they take any medications. Yeah, atorvastatin, thyridazine, metformin, and low-dose aspirin. Oh, so you have everything I asked about. Check. Want some more? Way too many people don't understand presbyopia. As you age, your lens hardens and can't focus up close anymore. Of course, when this is explained, I get a lot of people who believe they're way too young for bifocals. No, 60 is not too young for bifocals. Why doesn't the doctor have to wear bifocals? He does. He's wearing progressives. You don't see the line. Or, after trying to get used to multifocal lenses for a few days, giving up and demanding we remake them as single vision, and then getting mad at me again when they can't read with them. I never needed bifocals before. Why can't you just make me regular glasses? Regular glasses always work just fine. Yeah, you used to be 20. Also, you came to see us because you can't read with your regular glasses. In the same vein, these same people complaining about their own insurance to me because progressives are expensive. A line bifocal is covered entirely. Progressives cost a lot. I can't have lines in my glasses like an old person. Then you want progressives. This easily triples the bill. Why are you so expensive? I need to be able to see. Yeah, you need a bifocal. You don't need a progressive. You want a progressive. Insurance pays for what you need, not want. I actually had a guy make me talk to his insurance agent about him needing medically necessary progressives. A progressive lens is never medically necessary. Stop being cheap and listen to what I say. I am not a salesman. I am a medical professional. Stop acting like you know better than me. 80 plus year old patient who was declining with multiple diagnoses and about three decubitus ulcers. Daughter was adamant that her father be kept on his strict paleo diet because that would supercharge his healing. She had a stack of diet books. He simply wasn't getting enough nutrition to heal the ulcers. He didn't like the diet at all, by the way. At some point, you kind of have to stop being polite and just tell patients and family members bluntly that you don't have time for this crap and what you recommend they can do and what they want and just document everything. It happens a lot, but she sticks out. TLDR, gross eyeball stories from Eye Doctor. I recently had a 30-year-old insulin-dependent male argue he knows when to take his sugar medicine. He had bilateral retinopathy and a severe vitreous heme in one eye, legally blind. Driving a car last eye check eight years ago, lost glasses two years ago, will need four more surgeries, including an inevitable cataract. I had a patient tell me they clean their contact lens with milk because it gets the acid off them. I had a patient ask me if it was okay to look briefly at the sun for short periods of time to improve their eyes. I was amazed and kindly suggested they don't. Had a patient put eardrops in one eye, white part of eye, conjunctiva, scarred over entire cornea and was left with no light perception. Asked me if he should have come in sooner. It had been four months. He needs a cornea transplant, which suck and take over a year to recover from. Patient with a retinal detachment told me to put more medicine in their glasses to see better. Macula was off so they could barely count fingers four feet in front of their face. Had a patient wear contacts designed for two-week daily wear left in for eight months. They literally grew into and became a part of the eye. It was repulsive. Had a patient with a six-year-old translating. Basically, no clue besides eye hurts. Her hand covering her eye, I asked to see the problem. Her eye looked like a shriveled up grape. The optic nerve was holding onto a shriveled up, decayed eye loosely hanging in the orbit. She wanted glasses. Had a lady put jock itch in her eye to cure her suspected fungus. I asked her why she thought it was a fungal infection and she just had an inkling. They are rare. Cataracts on a 58 year old male working rooftops for 30 years with no sunglasses. Best corrected vision was count finger six feet one eye, barely seeing better another. First eye exam. Mad when told he needs surgery and should not drive a car. Had a patient tell me the benefits of using alcohol wipes to clean her privates. Out of the blue. I'm an eye doctor. Had a guy clean his contacts and shower with shampoo because he was convinced it was better. Raging red eye two weeks later. Homemade contact solutions are always fun to hear. Vinegar? Salt water? Spit is not cleaner than fresh solution. But please tell me more. Had a guy recently come in because wife made me. Tried with tweezers to remove metal from cornea. Didn't look pretty. I removed the remaining metal rust with the needle and spinning burr tip brush. Antibiotics Q2 hours. Told him to not do that again. Had a patient crush a pill up and put in eyes. It was an eye vitamin, but taken by mouth. Her eyes were angry. I had a patient walk in one day with no glasses or contacts. 
had full penetrating cornea transplant in both eyes 17 years ago. Last eye exam was 12 years ago. Swore he could see fine. Clearly a transplant graft rejection, one eye with no functional vision, and other was a gnarly looking good eye. I barely got him seeing with glasses on the one eye and can't drive. Uncontrolled diabetes too. Messy. Have had more than one patient argue with me about not seeing right. They either had two or more contacts in the eyes or none at all. When they try to remove a contact that is not there, it causes a painful abrasion. Multiple women using non-approved glues to glue on fake eyelashes. Leaks and burns in eyes. Just why? Using fake contacts from the nail salon. Then it never ceases to amaze me when I hear, I just use the same solution until it turns brown or black. Every day. Had a patient using a homeopathic drop to cure itchy eyes. She had pubic lice living on her lashes and they lay eggs and bite. Repulsive. But still convinced the drops cause the lice? Here's a link to a Wikipedia article about crab louse. You pluck the offending lashes out and use a cream to kill the crap you can't see. Thank God that was only once. I have to convince a lot of people to not use hand sanitizer in their eyes. Way too many, actually. I had a patient not taking her herpetic eye drops just because she wanted to pray instead. Yes, herpes on eye. Luckily, I convinced her to do both medicine and pray. I could go on and on. I'm a dental student. One patient in particular is a pathological liar. During one visit, they claimed to have gone to medical school. Next visit was that they did dental army. Last visit was that they had a PhD. The patient will say things like, Hey doc, do you need me to move my head mesial or distal? No, I need you to move your head right. Hey doc, are these cavities being caused by the anaerobic pathology microbes? No, they are caused by you eating snacks all day and not brushing. I'm an OR nurse, and I had an oral surgery patient who had a self-reported history of 250 plus various surgical procedures, a list of 20-some allergies, tons of reported health issues, plus her preteen son supposedly had dozens of health issues as well. She refused to remove her glasses during induction, started screaming and crying about claustrophobia when we put the mask on her face. She also insisted on taking a stuffed animal to the OR. Anyway, getting to the point. She was having oral surgery because she told us, insisted, that the last time she went to the dentist, they told her not to brush her teeth for at least a year. So she hadn't brushed her teeth in like a year and a half. That one was for the books. Pediatric dental is a minefield for I am very smart material. But why does my child have 17 cavities? We don't drink soda or eat processed sugars. All we drink is organic juice and eat those real fruit gummies. Well, fruit has a lot of sugar in it, but the bottle says no sugar added. Right, there's no additional sugar added, but there's already a lot in there naturally. Oh, and we're an all-natural household, so we don't use fluoride toothpaste. And we don't floss, because the material the floss is made out of is toxic. Oh, and a lot of times we don't brush their teeth before bed because we're too tired. My favorite excuse for not flossing their child's teeth is... Do you know how hard it is to floss a kid's teeth? I, I mean, I'm a pediatric dental hygienist, so... yeah. Where to start? Picture a middle-aged man. His index finger is five times the size of the rest of his fingers. It smells, it's leaking pus, there's necrotic tissue... Basically, one huge infected cancerous finger. He was a firm believer in not taking any sort of medication, including antibiotics or chemo. Died a few weeks later, but he did manage to tell us we were all idiots before he passed away. Patient was a young child who came in with an extremely high blood glucose level. Once she was stable, we did some teaching, and I kept her for a few days for observation. For some reason, every time I checked her, her levels would be extremely high although we were appropriately treating her. Turns out her family would bring her fast food for every meal and hide it in the side table. More teaching and resources were put into place. Had a mom in hysterics because she was convinced that her neighbor's, friend's, stepson's, teacher's dog has MRSA so her baby was going to die. It took everything within me to not tell her that most of the hospital staff have MRSA. Just had some amazing people inform me with several scholarly documents that MRSA isn't as prevalent as once thought. It's only about 5% of hospital staff. Thank you, wonderful people. But it took three hours for me to calm her down after I called infectious control, her pediatrician, gynecologist, and family doctor. Yes, I had to call all these people. Yes, they laughed at me. Yes, she was beside me the whole time, questioning their judgment. I love my job, but at times, it makes me crazy. I'm gonna leave you all with this wild ride of a story. ERRN here. Not a physician, but you may find this interesting. Young adult male presents with multiple abscesses on various parts of his body. States he injected his boyfriend's semen into himself trying to get pregnant. He tells one of the APCs he should have gone with his original plan and tried on his dog first. Psych clears him. He's admitted to the floor and gets IV antibiotics. What? 
I've heard of not sticking your woohoo in crazy, but that dude's boyfriend was sticking a lot more than woohoo in crazy. Wow, that's phenomenal. As a psych doctor, we allow for stupidity, but man, that sounds extra special. So, if psych cleared him, that means they determined he wasn't delusional. Which means they somehow figured out with a degree of certainty that he was just that stupid. <laughs> As someone who has done ER mental health assessment in the past, I would love to have been there to hear the series of questions that led them to, yep, he's actually that stupid. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot linked in the description too. Either way, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you guys next time.